You get once in a lifetime to make a bet. If you believe the system is broken, take that. Well, then this has a very good chance of working. If you believe that the equality gap needs to change, this has a good reason to work. There will be an ETF that comes, there's a futures contract, or you can just get up to speed and buy Bitcoin. Because this is not the old world, this is the new world, and the moment you do it, you realize how different it all is. Mm -hmm. Then you realize the speed yeah. of which you can pay somebody, and the speed of which the system settles, how you are your own bank, how you can get your own yield outside of the banking system. And then you start going, I get it, this is, this is a whole different world. I just see the, uh, see the, the coin uh, inventory coming off of the exchanges and all of the miners are now hodlers and the potential for some ETF to come in the US at exactly the wrong time where there literally are not enough coins and driven by insensitive buying money flowing directly to an ETF that must track that index i mean there is there's a setup here that looks insanely bullish yes and i i've noted that too and i've called it the wall of money right. you know there is no supply the only supply actually in the market to be truthful is there's a couple of the big funds that rebalance at month end and quarter end because that's what institutions do and that's new for this space and basically it's day traders being stopped out or being you know cleared out of inventory because there's no actual supply. And you're putting these elephants into the bathtub like BlackRock. I mean, it's just, I mean, there's, there's no room for them all. And then you add an ETF, there is no room. I think there is the risk that we get, and I don't know what the probability is, but it's higher than most people expect, that we don't stop at kind of 200,000 on this cycle or 280 where plan B stock to flow is. But we actually go kind of batshit crazy because of this and we get to half a million or maybe even a million. I, I don't know. I can't price that upside, but I, I feel like the same thing is I've, I've never seen something like it. On the flip side, you can see there are breaks being applied. The breaks have really come now. They keep shifting around, but currently it's known as FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt. Right. And you hear this a lot because people are finding it very hard to catch up with the fact there's a parallel financial system being built. So people are cynical by nature. They don't want to believe in Silicon Valley. And I watch this on Twitter all the time. The mean reversionist nature of most people means that they get cynical. They, they enjoy it going up a bit and then they turn against it. We don't believe in this. And they did it all the way through with technology and I'm guilty of that too. And now I've realized that it was wrong of me because these are exponential rises that go on over time. The, yeah, the, I mean, the wall of money is huge coming into it. And the more the market cap goes up, the more it brings in other people. It's a reflexive loop of a, of a magnitude I've never seen before. So, I remember back but in... The, but, sorry, sorry, just to go, go back, I remember my train of yeah. thought was the, the slowing of the brakes keeps changing with this FUD. But the key one that's going around now is energy. That's come from the ECB. Why? Because they want to slow institutional adoption because they've created another hurdle now. And I've been having calls with all of these institutions. So now we need to prove that it's, you know, it's worthy of our ECG, ESG, ESG mandate. ESG, right, right. The reality is it's actually driving a green tech revolution that the richest man in Norway, you know, has just set up a hydro plant to mine Bitcoin. And it's mm. driving actually electricity costs down around the world. So it's a wrong narrative, but it's a yet another FUD narrative that we all have to stand up and fight for if we believe in this space. And we've gone through so many of these it doesn't stop because what is at stake is the very system of money itself. And I'm not saying in the anarchist way of we're all going to have a new currency and Bitcoin's the currency of the world. I don't believe that. There's a probability of it, but I don't believe it. And I don't really care. All I know is there's this massive digital playing field that's been built for us to all completely immerse ourselves in, make money from, enjoy. Our business models will change, everything will change. Um, it's fantastic. I also think it's it's really interesting that th this is a system that survived, or an ecosystem that survived uh, the March 2020 events without intervention by any overarching central bank, without 
being bailed out and the exchanges survived no one went sideways or bankrupt i'm sure a lot of traders were stopped out of positions and 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 there was a reset done but that system functioned without an overseer trying to manage the parts of it in order to avoid any kind of outcome that they didn't want and it it functions without system breaks 24 7 right 365 days a year with as you say there is there's regulation but it's a it's a truly free market and it works and so even though everyone thinks it's a pristine system where you can you can have this trusted recorded ownership of who owns the collateral i get that blockchain helps a lot but humans will find every single way possible to create leverage yeah um and we will screw it up again because we've done it to yeah, everybody <laughs> including the, have, the gold standard had plenty of leverage blew it all up you know it's we're gonna have nft clos for sure yeah because so many people are focused on the narrow yeah and there's this war stupid war going on about all of this stuff but when you just step back and kind of just mark it down on a whiteboard and mm-hmm. go okay what's actually going on here you sit back and go oh my god i've never seen anything like this before yeah. It's like I think a call you, option on a future, you know, like, why are you, right. it, it's like, everyone wants to sell the put. I'm like, can I, can I, can I buy the call on that? Like, yeah. can I, I get the right tail? I'll get the right tail on that. If you yeah, don't like. exactly right. And I call it that a call option on the future. That's as simple as that. Yeah. Well, I also like the way that, that, um, you know, so you, you convey the idea over and over again that we truly don't know when the internet came to be and, and, and started getting some adoption and, and popularity in 95 and 96, you didn't know Netscape, you know, Ask Jeeves, Google, what was gonna win, how it was going to change, what Amazon would become. You, you can't know that. You can have some confidence that the problems will be solved because there is so much sort of energy and computational energy and the smartest people and working on it and incentives driving that right yeah. so you've got I, I listen to this sort of the negative feedback all the time too well it doesn't do this it won't do that well let's go back uh, two years ago what didn't it do then what does it do now just what you won't know it's okay not to know and have certainty about how this is going to play out and what yeah. impact it's going to have because it, it's not knowable but it, you should revel in that because Agreed. what a beautiful puzzle to solve and to watch a film that you don't know where it's going to end right it's it's magic it gives us something different right most of us are pretty bored with being pessimistic about this whole thing <laughs> but you know about the financial markets right yeah. we've all been pretty pessimistic since 2000 because those of us who pay attention to the macro saw where this is all going and it was a and people have, we've all been pessimistic and here is the chance to just so forget all of that over here let's just be optimists let's have let's buy the call and yeah. not keep buying puts i think that's a great a great place to end because you know i think i think we're, we're all you and i are, are around the same age like we're sort of bitter gen answers right coming in to our own in 2000 and and always seeing the bear case and and i i, I totally agree you know here's something that is actually exciting and new and has the potential to um, realize tremendous positive change globally and, and solve a lot of the problems that, that I've been so frustrated about for so long. So it's, you know, it's, yeah, not, a, it's not a dead obvious case, right? It, it, it all could go fucking pear shaped, but there's a, but you know, we got a chance, right? And it's, that's right. And as you about. said, for cynical Gen Xs, it takes a while to get there, but when you get there, you're like, you know what? It's a lot easier to be optimistic.